Uh, you touched a little bit upon feedback, and that's actually our next question to ask for the panel. And if Olga, you'd like to start with that one, that'd be great. And the question is, how do you provide feedback that's necessary to learn while encouraging students to partake in those learner interactions in the online environment? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so with uh, my students who are like a regular college students, we do have learning management system. And of course, it's it's helpful, it's useful because then we use the learning management system to leave comments and we do leave comments both uh, typed, but also audio comments because uh, Canva, uh, Canvas, for example, allows you to leave recordings. And I've noticed that sometimes this is uh, uh, this is more important, especially if this is a speaking activity that they were submitting online, if it was a, syn a summer synchronous task. And uh, that's what I, I found very helpful to leave comments, the individual comments and both uh, typed and sometimes uh, written, especially if it's handwritten activity, I would use and correct it in the canvas, which canvas uh, allows you to do this uh, and uh, audio or video uh, responses. So when uh, we did the same thing with flip, when students were posting uh, their videos, we would leave the feedback both typed and audio video, especially if there was a focus. If I knew that some of the students maybe needed less uh, help with the pronunciation, intonations, right? Then we would just have like, written typed comments. But if you notice the students are still struggling with this, like with phonetics and, you know, stress patterns, oh, uh, we would be leaving uh, audio comments. And we have, uh, at Pitt, we have also integrated teaching assistants. So they helped us with this task as well. Um, and uh, uh, as I said, uh, uh, with Discord, for example, when my students were posting stuff, uh, instead of correcting the mistakes there, I would uh, I would uh, try to follow up on their comments or on their posts. But then this time I would use like I would choose only a couple of the like targeted mistakes right and i would comment but i would rephrase and incorporate the correct form in my response or in my follow-up question so for them to encounter but when we have during consultations time like uh, individual consultations i would look and i will show them and say okay here's the correct form this is what you used so we'll um, reflect on this uh, as well and um uh, also, what I noticed what was extremely uh, helpful, like, I mean, I mentioned Nearport, right? Nearport, because it provides also individual uh, feedback. And that's what I noticed uh, that was extremely helpful because we could see where the students are heading to and who needs support, who needs more support, who needs uh, less support. But um, uh, things like, for example, even uh, uh, sometimes, uh, uh, pairing up students uh, and asking for peer feedback, like peer reviews, that was extremely helpful. And I know that it, uh, like we have usual mixed groups, but also at the like already maybe intermediate level and higher, our uh, proficiency levels begin to, to range, <laughs> right? And uh, sometimes for things like this, I might use some of my strongest students, some of my heritage speakers, to provide some feedback for those students who need um, uh, support. So it not comes only from the teacher, but it can, can come in like more informal, informal way. And I can do this in a small groups, right? When they do some kind of working on specific task, working on specific project, and then this uh, one or two students will be helping the other student. So this is just a couple ideas how I've been using feedback and providing feedback both in like a virtual environment and face-to-face -face environment. Excellent. And both are helpful, especially like working peer reviews in where you can and having a little bit of feedback going both ways. I think that's really important. Thank you for that. And let's go to uh, Larissa, if you don't mind chiming in. How do you provide feedback that's necessary to learn while still encouraging students to partake in those learner interactions, especially in the online environments? Um, as I already mentioned before, um, I often use, you know, for the formal, for the formal feedback um, and informal too, for conversational practice to set up uh, the task to this um, actual, um, what is my proficiency, uh, what is my proficiency, um, the letter. 
So uh, it helps students to know what is expected from them when they're actually uh, speaking. Um, but um, also there's so many other things we do. Even in a Google Classroom, I use Google Classroom. There is one very simple function there. Uh, so I post a question or I post a picture and the students uh, will um, have a like a answer to the question. How was your weekend? My weekend was great. Um, and provide like a three things that you have to, uh, what did you do during the weekend? And so on. Sometimes I open it for the comments from the peers too. And the peers can uh, have a comments to comments. Uh, sometimes it's just the comments from the teacher. I like to use the peer review too. So if there is a, a possibility, depending on the uh, maturity level of students and their proficiency level too, um, it's very powerful to receive the feedback from peers first. Um, some classroom activities that we have, of course, there's a lot of uh, community building activities. And of course, the language is a social thing. So this is very important for us to be a community. Um, very often, or like one of the ice breaking activity in the beginning activity of the union, uh, students have to uh, present the 10 things about me, like Google Slides. Uh, we, again, it could be different proficiency, it could be just pictures in one word, or can it be uh, like a picture? And, you know, sentences and paragraphs with each of the slides. But after the presentation, everybody who was listen, uh, who was listening need to uh, ask a question, provide feedback and ask a question. Um, of course, there is a mini lesson how to provide feedback. <laughs> what can you say? What like a sentence stems, you know? Um, how would you express that you like something? And or how would you have like a uh, positive criticism, how would you phrase it in Russian language? Uh, it's both creating a community, um, opening up like a norms and safe space, and also learning the language needed for that. Um, even some po polite way to say that you don't understand something, like how to say, so there's some things like that. It's part of the feedback too, but it's how to provide it in a polite and appropriate way. Um, and then each student after the presentation will have to provide a feedback. It could be in the formative or in a Google Slides or in a Google Classroom, um, in some anonymous or not anonymous. It depends on the situation. Um, but I will like, cannot ask like the whole class if it's 26 students in the class, but I can ask some of them to to actually um, say it out loud. So kind of learning accountability and um, everybody knows that they could be asked. So random asking uh, questions too, um, which is important too for students to um, have this equality in a conversation. Um, actually the uh, modeling, yeah, it's very important too, again, and then uh, setting up the task. Um, if there are so many mistakes, I cannot provide it, like I cannot correct all mistakes. We are like learning this form today and this is what I'm providing a feedback on. I'm not correcting all the mistakes are there, um, but this is what we do. Um, when students have their own discussions in rooms, in the Zoom function rooms, um, I will visit them and make some notes. And at the end, of the activity will come together and I will, uh, not mentioning the names, but um, I can say for the whole class, like what, um, you know, we work today and what um, I see that what we need to work on. And then I will send uh, like a targeted feedback to students who need to work on something independently um, or some private comments. So, and also kind of knowing the community, knowing who will be okay if I will, you know, correct them uh, publicly or who not. So kind of have this sensitivity um, about that. Um, also, of course, I um, remind about the norms too. The norms is very important and feedback like today, we're working on that task. Um, or some of the uh, very often uh, strategies that I use is when we one student is interviewing another one and then um, and they switch the roles and then the other uh, person is talking about not themselves but about like using a third person uh, <laughs> narrative about another person so kind of a round robin too it could be partners and could be in the groups too 
in a groups, the whole group have to come up with uh, um, things that have they have in common. So that could be icebreaker at the beginning of the uh, unit or year. Um, like they have to find three things that everybody, maybe five people, maybe even more, or maybe just three, have in common, and also some unique characteristics. And then um, after they, you know, create this little presentation about their group, then I would say, okay, you found, yeah, you found this. So like feedback will be, okay, you um, did the task that was assigned to you or help them uh, with coming up with something else. Again, it's very important to first set up what they're working on and then provide feedback on that too. Um, and I guess this one too, um, students need to know what they need to do to level up. So in the feedback, very often, even if everything is great, then for the whole group, the feedback is, okay, now we're going to, next time we're going to work on that. So this is our next step. I think that's the main points that I have for the necessary feedback. Um, Those are all really important points. And I really like how you establish the norms about if we're doing peer feedback, what are we looking to help our fellow classmates with and making sure that we don't go into overwhelm I story i'll just quickly share it was one of my uh, upper level university classes that i had to write a composition in the target language and i remember getting my results back i must not have understood the lesson very well because i remember the paper just being full of red ink and it was quite overwhelming so we definitely want to make sure we kind of pick and choose what exactly are we trying trying to help our students with and making sure that we're giving them the feedback they need, but not too much. That's going to overwhelm. Thank you for that, Larissa. We appreciate it. And if Genny, we'll go to you again, the same question. How do you provide feedback that's necessary to learn while still encouraging students to participate in those learner interactions, especially in the online world? Sure. Um, and I actually find myself giving, providing uh, more detailed feedback, especially for the written homework and my students even um, at the very early stages of their proficiency, um, I asked them to do homework on online through Google Doc. And I ended up creating this little library of comments that I, uh, you know, save in my, you know, whatever note taking app. And if somebody's making, usually, you know, often, students make the same mistakes so okay I have a comment about oh, I have a comment about the case I have a comment about Katori clauses and I and this comment uh, this comments end up to be you know because I have space and it's certainly I can it's easier to insert those comments into Google Docs so this is not just correcting students but explaining uh, the mistake, explaining what's going on, why accusative case is appropriate, appropriate here. So actually provides me more, more space and makes it easier for me to um, be detailed in my feedback for the written homework. And as far the, as far as the kind of a um, synchronous communication, I find zoom and you know platforms like this are very helpful and it's something I, I, i'm trying to do sometimes in my actual classroom physical classroom um either myself or someone else will be sort of the alter ego of the person so the, this invisible helper that can be behind the person and whispering um the right answers or helping if somebody somebody's stuck and that's I'm trying to replicate it through chat. And if somebody is, you know, providing an answer and uh, saying something, I could uh, write in the chat um, to that person specifically, helping them with the vocabulary, helping them with the, uh, with this, with grammar or um, uh, asking a question that, uh, additional question they they could answer if they stuck and they don't know what to say so that kind of a that help that assistant invisible assistant is actually um you know uh is is really easy to do also when my students um uh do an exam and they usually do it in the format of uh a pair talking you know two students talking to each other 
um, I, uh, I'm there, I turn off my camera, I turn off my sound. So I'm there, but I'm not there. So they, they don't see me. They're talking to each other. I am there to kind of uh, record, you know, uh, the, the speech and kind of uh, make, make my comments, which I sometimes do in real time through chat. Uh, but I'm also, that kind of uh, removes the stress from like, oh, uh, the teacher watches me during the test or during the exam. And, you know, it's sort of a, oftentimes students forget that you're here because they don't see you. Um, but uh, it could also be um, uh, a device to help a, a struggling student who, you know, forgetting. Again, you can um, sort of channel your your help or your additional questions to the students through a private chat uh, uh, or it can be sort of um, this uh, invisible someone who will later provide the the, the feedback uh, to students after they're done and as far as uh, we mentioned the work in Google Doc and the Google Slides um, since you're there and you can see what students are doing, uh, you can use a highlighting tool to sort of uh, highlight things that need um, need more work. And maybe you can devise a system of, of colors. If it's yellow, then it's, you know, vocabulary the students need to work. And if it's green, then it's, it's grammar. Uh, but instead of uh, sort of uh, correcting them right away or um or of giving them the right answer you could just highlighting could be the first you know step i use technology in that way uh and then they would they would correct or you could also use the comment section comment function to to provide a more detailed feedback to students who are working on, on something on a text or um, something else. And we talked about formative, we talked about other tools. I also want to remind you about the polls. You know, a simple uh, thing like a, a Zoom poll could be uh, um, a quick way to get, uh, to to provide feedback and, and to get fed feedback also. But, you know, if there's a, if there's a concept you're explaining or uh, you need to do a quick uh, vocab quiz or whatever so the 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 zoom polls are so easy to set up and administer uh you don't need to go out of the zoom or use any external application so that's a tool that's right there at your disposal and can be used for for feedback um i think that's all i wanted to say Excellent and well put. As far as the comments as well that we can put in, I, I primarily teach in Canvas and I love that we have a feature where we can put a comment in for a student and also take them right out to some other type of online resource. I have a plethora of things and uh, comments that I've just accumulated over the years of students making the same mistakes, but I love that I can put in some extra supplemental feedback or some supplemental resource that's going to make more sense that they'll be able to make the connection hopefully have an easier time with that. Thank you for that, Evgeny. And then Heather, same question, again, talking about feedback. How do you provide feedback that's necessary to learn while encouraging students to still partake in those learner interactions in the online environment? I actually um, don't know that I have a lot to add to what my colleague said. I do pretty much all of, all of these same things. Um, like I said, we use Canvas. And um, just like you, Sarah and Olga, um, I really love this feature in Canvas that I can provide this, um, you know, personalized feedback. Either I can leave a video <laughs> if I find that to be more helpful. I can just leave audio, which I do most of the time because um, it's usually late at home when I'm grading. Um, and then for written, yeah, I do a lot with uh, Google, with Google Docs, you know, using the suggesting uh, function and leaving comments or highlighting where necessary. Um, if it's during a, um, a synchronous meeting, it really depends, right? Um, I think most, most of us language ed educators, like we try to parcel out um, our corrections. And um, I probably like a lot of you, I don't, I don't like to correct every single mistake that a student is making in real time. Um, so it really just depends, you know, if, uh, 
if the mistake is small and it's not something that we're focusing on, then, then I'll just let it slide. If it is um, something that we're learning, like maybe accusative case, you know, I might, uh, when a student is done, you know, stop and say, well, I heard this or, or follow up and write it in the chat or do both, you know, say and write in the chat. Um, this is what I heard, um, you know, I, is there anything that is wrong here, you know, or, or that we could correct? Um, and, but it really just depends on, on what the mistake is and whether or not it's, uh, kind of a topic of, of what we're working on. Um, if, if it's a mistake that students all are making, I may just, you know, stop a student where they are and say, okay, <laughs> let's stop. One, one thing I can think of is what I, what I ask at the beginning of every, you know, class is Kagdila. Um, and invariably, like several students will say, ya harasho, ya harasho. And this is, you can't say that. <laughs> you, you can't do that. And, um, and so I, I will usually stop in this. This is the first few classes of every semester stop and say, okay, what's going on here? We can't, you know, I'll, I'll go over the rules and stuff. So it really just, really just depends um, when it's the synchronous meetings, like whether it's an important topic or not, whether it's something that's systematic and all students need to focus on. Um, and then if it's offline asynchronous, I really try to kind of exploit and take advantage of all of the Canvas tools that, that we have for leaving feedback. And that's it. Excellent. And like you, it definitely depends on kind of what we're doing. And I, I would not always necessarily jump on every error. Sometimes I like to just get them producing, get them talking in the target language and, and get them going in the right direction. Thank you for that. So for the next few questions, I'm hoping we can go a little bit more rapid fire since we have a lot of content still to cover. Um, but I want to make sure that we get to some of these topics that are quite important. 